I suggest you guys go and check out episode one before you have any spoilers. It'll be linked in the top corner. Now let's get into it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of the Madden Olympics. Before we get into the action, I'm going to go ahead and remind you guys of our top five. In first place, we got the Rams with five medals, two gold medals, two silver medals, and one bronze medal. And we got the Bengals also at five total medals, but five silver medals. We got the Giants and the Eagles, both with four medals total. And rounding out the top five, we have the Saints with three gold medals. All right, let's see what our first challenge of the episode will be. All right, and it looks like we're going to be doing a 32 team bracket. I'm going to put all the teams in a bracket based on their standings currently in the challenge and. Whoever comes out on top will get the gold medal, and second place runner-up will get silver, and we'll have a third place placement match for the bronze medal. So I'll go ahead and get this bracket made up, and I'll show it to y'all before we get into the action. All right, and after taking a look at the standings, this is our 32-team bracket. We are going to go ahead and jump into the action with this left side of the bracket first so our first match we're going to get into is the rams versus the bills all right here we go this is with updated rosters as much as i can including deandre hopkins just getting signed to the titans it is now 14 nothing bills are stomping the rams even though the rams are the number one seed in this competition it's 21 nothing at halftime the rams finally get on the board it's 21 14 now now it's 28 14 Rams might make a comeback here, and the Bills shut them down. It's 42 to 45 to 29 is the final score. So the Bills will be moving on in the next round, and the Rams going out early. 32 seed upsetting the one seed. All right, our next matchup is going to be the Commanders versus the Vikings. The Vikings roster does not have Dalvin Cook because he is a free agent, but they do get a 14 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. Washington makes it 14 to 10 now before halftime. It's still 14 10. This is a close game. Yep. Minnesota gets on the board now. It's 17 13. It's 20 to 17 with two minutes remaining. Let's go ahead and see if we can hop into the action a little bit and see what happens. I pressed the wrong button, but it looks like. The Commanders have the ball, so all they need to do is really get a first down, and this game will be over. And they're in field goal range. So as long as Minnesota can stop them, they might have a chance. Second down. Starting to look good for Minnesota. They get one more stop, the Commanders will have to kick a field goal. They can still come back and get a touchdown to win the game. Sam Howell steps back, he throws, and it's a first down at the five-yard line. I think that just about does it. We're going to go ahead and make sure nothing else crazy happens. It's fourth and goal, so I mean, technically, if the commanders kick a field goal here, which they did not. They went for a touchdown, and they got it, locking up the game. So that's going to be it. The Commanders are going to win this game and move on to the next round. Our next matchup is going to be the Cardinals against the Steelers. All right, we got the Steelers at the Cardinals. And remember, as I said earlier, this is the Cardinals without DeAndre Hopkins. Let's get into it. Steelers start off quick, 14 to nothing. 21 to nothing. The Cardinals get seven on the board now. And now it's 24 to seven. It looks like the Steelers are about to run away with this one. Cardinals have to start making a push now, and it's not even going to happen. It is 31 to seven, and that's how the game's going to end. Cardinals, one of the higher seeds in this tournament, have already been eliminated. Our next matchup is the Ravens and the Bears. All right, Bears against Ravens. Let's get into it. 
And the Ravens start off with a 14 and nothing lead. And the Bears get the three on the board, but the Ravens make a 21 to three. 24 to three now. 31 to three, it's all but over. Utter domination from the Ravens. Next, our next matchup is the Eagles and the Raiders. Seven points. Now, ten points for the Eagles. Seven to ten. The Raiders are now in the lead, 14 to 10. Eagles make it 14 13. 14 to 19. It's 20 to 19. Just had a two-yard rush by Josh Jacobs for a touchdown, so it's going to be 21 to 19 with just under two minutes left. Wait a minute. Did I misunderstand what just happened? Never mind. It is 20 to 19. The Raiders are in field goal range with a minute 42 left. If the Eagles get a stop on this play. That the Eagles will have a chance to win the game. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Jimmy G takes the snap, hands off, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw into the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. Technically, I don't think this is over yet because the Eagles can still score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion. So, we're going to keep watching this game, but that just makes it that much harder for the Eagles to come back. The fuck is Ian Book as quarterback? Why do the starting quarterbacks not play? I don't understand. Looks like Devontae Adams is very upset for some reason. But it is second down and ten. And I do not know why, but Ian Book is the starting quarterback for this team. He throws it, and it's incomplete. Yeah. I really don't know why Jalen Hurts is not playing, but it's third and ten, and this is, like, one of the last chances the Eagles have, so they need to start moving the ball. Instant throw, and it's picked off. That is the game. Ian Book just choked it away for the Eagles, and the Raiders will move on to the next round. And the Raiders went on and put some more points on the board just to make it hurt more. Ending with a 30 to 19 score. Another high seed in this competition getting eliminated. Our next matchup is going to be the Cowboys and the Lions. The Cowboys start off with a 7 nothing lead. The Lions get three on the board, and now another three to make it six to seven. But the Cowboys get a 14 to six lead here, 21 to six right before halftime. The Lions still have only field goals. It is 28 to nine. And now they get a touchdown, 16 to 28, and the game's over. The Cowboys took care of the Lions with ease. And at least this time, both of the actual starting quarterbacks played for each team. Our next matchup is going to be the 49ers and the Jaguars. And that's 49ers get on the board with a field goal, making it 3 nothing. The Jaguars come back 7 to 3. Now 14 to 3. It's 14 to 10. 17 to 10 going into halftime. Just kidding. 17 13 going into halftime. And now the 49ers take the lead. It is 23 to 17. And right before the two minute warning, the Jaguars score a touchdown to make it to 24 to 23. So let's go ahead and slow this game down a little bit and see what happens on this 49ers drive. It looks like Trey Lance is the starting quarterback for the 49ers today. George Kittle with a 21-yard reception puts them almost into field goal range to where they can start running the clock out. So let's go ahead and hop in and see what they're going to do. If you are watching the video at this point in time, comment down below who you think is going to win this tournament bracket. Trey Lance drops back. He is going to throw the ball here, and it's incomplete. 48 seconds left now. Their target is the 40-yard line. They are on the 41, but they need to drain a little more of this clock off unless they want to give the Jaguars a chance to win the game. And it looks like now they're going to be lining up to run the ball with Christian McCaffrey here. In that they will not do 
fake the handoff, and Trey Lance is going to get sacked. That is something you do not want to do at this point in the game. It is now 3rd and 14. The 49ers had to take a timeout here. And 3rd and 14, they can't get the first down. They need to at least get into field goal range here. Trey Lance drops back. He throws the check down to Christian McCaffrey, which misses. And it is 4th and 14. They're going to have to go for this now. Okay, Trey Lance drops back. He throws, and it is knocked away. It was intended for Debo Samuel. But that is the game. And our final, ma final matchup of the left side of this bracket, round of 32, is the Saints and Chargers. We are here at the Caesar Superdome for the final matchup of the left side of this bracket. Saints at Chargers. I'm sorry, wrong way. Chargers at Saints. All right, let's see what happens. The Saints are on the board for us with a 3 to nothing lead. It is now 6 to 7. Very quick score. 13 to 7 now 20 to 7. Saints are taking it away. With... And now 23 to 7. The Chargers are going to have to make a move quick. And it looks like this game is within 8 points. It is 3rd and 2. Let's go ahead and see what happens on this next play. If the Chargers will get the ball back. And it looks like they will cuz the Alvin Kamara had a negative 3 yard rush. All right, the Chargers have a chance. Let's go ahead and see if they can get a game-winning drive here. They're going to have to get a two-point conversion as well, so this is going to take a lot of work for them, but it's still possible. Justin Herbert drops back, and it's almost picked off by Demario Davis. It's second and ten. Justin Herbert's in the pocket for a long time. He starts to scramble, but then he drops it down. Which, he makes a juke and gets the first down, but they're going to have to hurry. They have no timeouts. And they are indeed going to no huddle here. A minute and ten seconds almost left. Justin Herbert stands in the pocket. He throws it down. Austin Eckler. I think that's Austin Eckler. Um, yeah, that, that's Austin Eckler. Definitely. But the clock is still ticking, so they're going to have to start moving it pretty fast. Instant throw to Keenan Allen here. Still in bounds though. They gotta get some more yardage on these plays if they wanna score a touchdown. There's only 35 seconds left. Now at 25 seconds. Gotta go deep. He's standing in the pocket. He throws it. A wide open receiver. But they don't have a timeout. There's only 13 seconds left. Are they gonna get down and have enough time to snap the ball? I don't think they will. Unfortunate. Time was an issue. All they had to do was get out of bounds there. But the Saints will come on top. 23-15. to 15. And it looks like for some reason Jameis started over Derek Carr. Don't understand why that happened. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to the right side of this bracket with our first matchup of the Bengals and the Patriots. It looks like we have a snow game on our hands in Cincinnati here. Patriots start with a 7-0 lead, now 10-0. Bengals get a field goal, but it's now 13-3. 13-10, 20-10, before halftime. Wow. And the Bengals are making a comeback here. It's tied 27 all. 30-27, 30-30, 37-30. It's tied at 37 with a minute left. Let's see if we're going to have an overtime game here. The Bengals have a ball. Third and one, though. It's seeming like the Bengals will maybe try a field goal here with 12 seconds left. But I definitely think they could run another play before kicking the field goal. And that's what they're going to do. I am mistaken. Tied at 37 on the 37-yard line. Joe Mixon gets the first down. Nine seconds left. I'm wondering if this is the time they're going to kick the field goal here. And they will indeed line up for the field goal, but they're going to get iced by Walmart brand Bill Belichick. Here we go. Field goal to put the Bengals on top. The kick is up, and it is good. Wait, it's no good. Wait, it was wide right. 
Oh no, and with five seconds left, the Patriots have two timeouts. They could maybe get a quick play and get themselves in the field goal range here. What a turn of events. Mac Jones can lead the Patriots to the promised land on this play. It looks like they're just going to go for a Hail Mary, but he doesn't even get it off. He gets sacked before throwing the ball, and that means we're going to overtime. We're going to go ahead and speed up overtime a little bit, though. Yeah, it looks like the Patriots have the ball first. It is third and eight already, though. But they get the first down pass. Now third and 15 again. And they get a penalty on the defense. That gives them another first down. Could this be the Patriots' lucky day? No, they're going to have to get a field goal here. No, they're going to actually go for it. And they're going to get the first down on the 20-yard line. Now let's go ahead and maybe watch some of the plays here. Mac Jones fakes the handoff and he gets the completion down to his tight end. I don't know why I hopped into that. We're going to just keep watching play by play like this and it looks like the Patriots did end up getting a touchdown here so now the Bengals will have a chance to tie it up potentially win the game I guess we'll hop into their drive and we will see what happens and so the minute and 38 left they don't have a lot of time they have to score a touchdown, and if they want to win, they have to score a two-point conversion as well. Joe Burrow throws it instantly, and it's almost picked off. It is now second and ten. Joe Burrow throws it again instantly, this time completing it for a first down. Oh, I'm sorry, third and inches. Third and inches just under a minute and ten seconds left. Joe Burrow has a weird snap, but he throws it, and it's, wow, I thought that was picked off. It is fourth and inches. This is the play that will decide the game here. We could have a potential one and two seeded upset here. And it is incomplete. The Bengals have lost this game. It is over. The number two seed has been upset by the Patriots. In a overtime thriller. A little bit of pass interference there maybe. But. Hey. They didn't call it. I can't call it myself. That's over. Alright our next matchup is going to be the Dolphins and the Panthers. Here we are at Hard Rock Stadium. With the Dolphins. Hosting the Panthers. Let's see what happens here. Dolphins get on the board first. 3 to nothing. It is now 10 to nothing. 13 to nothing. And Panthers finally get on the board with a field goal. But it's now 20 to 3. Panthers have to make a move now if they want to win. And it's not going to happen. 23 to 3. It is over. Our next matchup is going to be the Falcons and the Broncos. Broncos get a 7 to nothing lead. Now a 10 to nothing. Now 13 to nothing. But the Falcons get back with a touchdown. But it's now 20 to 7. Before halftime, it is 27 to 7. 27-14, the Falcons might try to make a comeback, but it does not look likely as it is 42-14 now. And it does not matter that the Falcons scored 21 points because the Broncos doubled their score and have won this game. And our next matchup here is the Titans and the Colts. An interdivision AFC South rivalry here, Colts and Titans. Here we go. The first team to get on the board is the Colts with a 7 to nothing lead. And they do it again, 14 to nothing. Right at halftime, it is 14 to nothing still. 17 to nothing now. The Colts are embarrassing the Titans. It is now 20 to nothing. Are they going to get shut out? No, they get a touchdown here. But it still does not matter. The addition of DeAndre Hopkins to the Titans obviously did not make that much of a difference as the Colts have won it 22 7. And our next matchup here is the Giants and the Texans. And we are at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. 
and not New York, despite them being the New York Jets. If the Giants, they're the Giants, I messed up. Anyway, it is 7-0. If the Giants lose this game, they will be the last team in the top four to be upset, but it might actually happen. It is 17-14 at halftime. Now it's 20-14. The Texans get a field goal here. It is now 23-17. to However, it is 4th and 19. I think the Texans might just have to punt it here. Which they did not do. And it looks like the Giants will probably be able to walk away with this game. If they get a field goal here, it'll be a nine point game, which is two possessions. And that is what they did. Basically making it not impossible, but very unlikely for the Texans to win. Let's see if they do it. They have to get some points here on this drive. And it's already fourth down. And they did get the first down. But I don't, oh, that was a big reception. They might actually have a chance here. They need points now, though. They're running out of time. And they do get a touchdown. With 30 seconds remaining, they're going to have to get the onside kick. Let's go ahead and hop in and see if they do that. Here we go. The onside kick. It does not look like the Giants are lined up for an onside kick either. Just kidding, they were. And they got it. Meaning the Giants, as the number three seed in this competition, will go ahead and... Hold on. With three matchups left of our round of 32, we have the Seahawks and the Chiefs next. We all know how this will probably end, but let's see what happens. You never know. We've had some crazy upsets already. It is 7 to nothing. Now it's tied 7-7. Seven, seven. 14 to 7. Back tied up. Seahawks are keeping up. It is 21 to 7. 21 to 14 now. I'm sorry. Now it's 24 to 14. Seahawks need to start scoring. It's 27-17, 30-17, and the Seahawks have a chance here if they can stop the Chiefs here on this play. They will get the ball back with under a minute left and one timeout. Maybe, probably no timeouts because they're going to have to use one if they stop them. All right, well, can the Seahawks do it? And stop Patrick Mahomes and the run game of the Chiefs. No, they can't. It's a first down, and that will be the game. Seahawks put up a good fight, but the Chiefs will come out on top. And our next matchup is the Browns and the Jets. Let's see what happens here. Browns get a 7 nothing lead. The Jets tie it right back up. It is now 14 to 7. 21 to 7 for the Browns. 24 to 7 for the Browns. They are not stopping. 24-14. 31-14. It looks like it's all but over for the Jets. And it is. 31-14 final score. Browns win this one. And Zach Wilson was starting for the Jets. I do not know why they did not start Aaron Rodgers. I don't know why the best starting players on these teams are not playing. And our final matchup of the round of 32 is the Buccaneers and the Packers. And the Packers get on the board first, 7 to nothing. Tampa Bay ties at 7 to 7. It's now 14 to 7 Packers, 21 to 7 Packers, 24 to 7 Packers, 27 to 7 Packers. I don't think the Buccaneers can come back from this one, but they're going to try. 27 14 now 30 to 14. It's all but over. Packers win at 30 to 14. All right, and as we get into our round of 16 matchups, we're going to have the Commanders and the Bills. I finally figured out the issue why the starting quarterbacks weren't playing. I had to reorder the depth chart on the roster I was using. So from here forward, we should have the correct lineups as they should be. So let's go ahead and get into it. The Commanders and the Bills. The Bills are going to start with a 3 to nothing lead, but the Commanders take it back 7-3, to three, and now it's 10-7. 14-10, 17 and 14 right before halftime. Bills have the lead, but the Commanders take it right back. This is a back-and-forth game here. It is now tied 24 all, 31 to 24 with two and a half minutes left. Let's slow this game down a little bit and see what happens next. Looks like the Bills are driving down to score. 
It's third and six, though. So they do get the first down. And at the two minute warning, it is second and 20. But that doesn't matter for Josh Allen and the Bills as 11 yard reception makes it third and nine. And why did it not skip the play? They did not get the first down, so they're gonna have to go for this. Let's hop in the actual play and see if they get this fourth down conversion to keep them alive. If they don't, it, it's going to be very likely that the Commanders win this game, which wouldn't be an upset in the form of the bracket, but it definitely would be an upset in Madden standards because the Bills are probably one of the best teams. All right, here we go, fourth and nine. Josh Allen throws the ball to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. Forget the first down. They went straight to the touchdown. Gabe Davis. They still need the extra point to tie this game up, though. And then the commanders still have over a minute and a half with all three timeouts. So this game is long from over. It is good. 31 all. And we're going to hop in to see if the commanders can drain this clock out and lead a game-winning drive. I believe Jacoby Brissett is their quarterback right now. If you hear any loud noises in the background, they're doing construction outside of my apartment right now. So please ignore them. And I apologize. The commanders basically did nothing with our drive, and now they have to punt the ball away to the Bills. The Bills have 37 seconds to get into field goal range. Can they do it? And the answer to that question was no. We are going to go to overtime after this incomplete pass. All right, and Washington starts with the ball. And they're moving it pretty well. And just as I say that, they get another first down, actually. Third and nine. And they get a big reception from Logan Thomas. 30 yards. They are down to the four-yard line. Will they capitalize with a touchdown? And yes, they will. Antonio Gibson. That is now on the Bills to get another touchdown. Or else the game is over. So let's go ahead and see what they're going to do. Starting off with an incomplete pass by Josh Allen. And then a four-yard rush by... Naeem Hines making it third and six already, which they do not convert. That means they have to go for it here. It's the game. Let's hop into this play and see what happens. Can the number 32 seed in this tournament win another upset game? Or will their Cinderella run fall short here? Let's find out. Fourth and six. Game on the line. Josh Allen drops back. And he completes his pass. Down to the 48-yard line. We're going to go ahead and stay in this game and watch to see if the Bills can indeed get a touchdown on this drive. First and 10, Josh Allen. He scrambles in the pocket, and he gets a completion. They are now into field goal range and get another first down. Another completion down to the to tight end. Second and five, getting close to two minutes left in overtime. Another completion. This will be for a first down. A round of 16 is starting off with a very intense game here. Shallon drops back. He starts to scramble. There's a lot of open field in front of him, but he takes the slide down at the 18. Josh Allen throws, and it's complete down to the five-yard line. He, hand, he fakes the handoff and takes it for himself. Josh Allen gets it down to the two-yard line. It is second and goal. Now he does hand the ball off. And he gets the touchdown. Now the question is, will they go for two to try to win this game? There is only 48 seconds left, so if they don't go for two, we might be heading to another overtime period. And they are going for the extra point, so we might be heading into another overtime period. Kobe Brissett and the Commanders need to get into field goal range here with 48 seconds left. He's starting that off with a big pass that's picked off by... Tredavious White, I think, and that might be a pick six. Oh, he gets caught. But that's okay, because all the Bills have to do now is kick a field goal, and that was Tredavious White indeed. Into double coverage. What a interception. And this might have just clutched up the game for the Bills to get another upset here. Nope, they're going for their field goal, but they will get iced by Washington. Here we go. The Bills... With a chance to win this game, that's up. And it's good. 
the Bills have pulled off the upset and won this game. And for our next matchup, we're going to have the Steelers and the Ravens. Steelers start off with the ball, but don't score. Ravens come back 7-0. It's now 14-0 Ravens. 21-0 Ravens. 24-0 Ravens. 24-7 at halftime. I'm sorry. But now it's 27-7. The Ravens have taken away with this one, and I think it is all but over, especially with that score. It is 34-14 to 14 final score. The Steelers have been eliminated. Our next matchup is going to be the Raiders and the Cowboys. The Raiders start off with the ball and get a three-point field goal, and now it's 10 to nothing. It's now 17 to nothing. Dallas is getting stunned here, but it's now 17 to 7 right before halftime. Now it's 17-14. 20 to 14, 26 to 14, 26 21. It is 33 to 21. A 12 point game with under two minutes left. I think this game is just about over. And it is indeed over. The Raiders have upset the Cowboys here 33 to 21. All right, our next matchup is the Jaguars and the Saints. And the Jaguars get on the board first, seven to nothing. Saints tie it right back up. Now ten to seven. Ten to ten going into halftime. Or thirteen ten going into halftime. I'm sorry, but now it's seventeen thirteen. Twenty to seventeen. Twenty to twenty tie game. The Saints go on and make it a twenty seven to twenty game. With just under a minute and a half left. We're gonna go ahead and hop into this game. See if the Jaguars can pull off the game tying drive here. Saints have been in this position once prior and they won their game, so let's see if they can do it again. Here we go. First and 20 from the 29 yard line. Trevor Lawrence takes a high snap and hands off the ball and gets only two yards. They're going no huddle now, under a minute left. Second and 18. Trevor Lawrence steps back and he throws to. Number 17 here who makes a juke move and gets out of bounds. That was Evan Ingram. I did not know he wore 17. Third and 12 still. Trevor Lawrence hands off the ball. And gets down to the 41-yard line. I'm not sure why they handed off the ball there, but it is now fourth and eight. And this is the game-defining play here. If the Jaguars do not convert this, the Saints will win. Here we go. Fourth and eight. Trevor Lawrence takes a snap, throws it instantly. And it is incomplete. That is the game. Saints will move on. For our next matchup, we have the Patriots and the Dolphins. The Dolphins get a field goal to start it off. 3 to nothing. now 6 to nothing. It is now 7 to 6. The Patriots got a touchdown. And the Patriots make it 14 to 6 to go to halftime. It's now 21 to 6. 21-13. 24-13. Twenty-seven, thirteen. It is all but over. The Patriots, as the number thirty-one seed, have upset another team. All right, our next matchup is the Broncos and the Colts. It's a rainy day here in Denver, so let's see what happens when the Colts and the Broncos face off. The Broncos take a three-nothing lead, and they make it ten to nothing now. But the Colts respond with a touchdown. It's now seventeen to seven, twenty-four to seven, going into halftime. It's now 24 to 10, 27 to 10. The Broncos have basically run away with this one at this point. 30 to 17, it's all over. Our next matchup is the Giants and the Chiefs. The Chiefs start off with a field goal, making it 3 0. Now it's 10 to nothing, Chiefs. Giants get a touchdown, 10 to 7. Now 14 to 7, 14 to 10, Giants. 17 to 14, 21 to 17, 28 to 17. The Giants are taking a lead here. 31 to 17. They're running away with the game. It's 24 14. Under two minutes to go. The Giants just got a first down. Let's see if they're able to run out the clock here. They get this first down, it's over. And they did. The Giants have taken the win here. Not in terms of the tournament here, but in terms of team skill. This is a big upset. The Chiefs are now out of this competition. And in our final round of 16 matchup, we have the Browns and the Packers. Both the Browns and the Packers are in throwback jerseys for this game. 
The Browns start off with a touchdown, 7 0, but the Packers respond with a field goal. It is now 7 3. Now it's 10 7. Browns tie it back up, make it 13 10 going into halftime. Now it's 20 10 Browns. 27 10 Browns. The Browns have run away with this one. It is all over. Yeah, I broke Madden. But, um, anyway. There we go. Okay. It's fixed now. Browns win 30-24. to 24. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our round of eight with the Bills and the Ravens starting us off. Ravens start off with the ball and get a touch, uh, a field goal, I'm sorry, but the Bills get a touchdown. Now it's 10-7 to 7 Ravens, 14-10 Bills. Ravens make it 14-13, but the Bills come back with a touchdown, 21-13 at halftime. Now it's 24-13. And it's now 27-13. The Bills are taking it away again with the upset, but the Ravens get the ball back with a minute 16 seconds left. It's not all that over yet. Let's see what happens with the Ravens, if they can get this game-tying drive. Lamar Jackson drops back. He throws incomplete. Now second down and 10. It is a completion of Mark Andrews in traffic, but it is now third and two. Time is ticking, and they only have one timeout. They go no huddle with just that 50 seconds left. Lamar Jackson drops back. He throws, and it's picked off again by Tr not Tredavious White. That is Micah Hyde. The Bills have another game-winning interception here. Back-to-back -back games. Once again, the 32-seeded team in this bracket is making names and shocking the nation. In our next matchup, the Raiders and the Saints. We have a Derek Carr revenge game in this matchup. Raiders and Saints. Let's see what happens here. Saints get on the board first, seven to nothing. The Raiders tie it back up, seven to seven. But the Saints come back, fourteen now, seventeen to seven at halftime. Twenty-four seven now. Twenty-four fourteen. Thirty-one fourteen. The Saints have run away with it. it is now thirty-four fourteen. It's all but over. The Saints are moving on to the semifinal game. Our next matchup: Patriots and Broncos. Let's see what happens here. Winner to the semifinals. It is now seven to three. Patriots now ten to three. Almost halftime here. It is now thirteen to three. But the Broncos make it thirteen to ten before halftime. It is now seventeen thirteen. Broncos, but the Patriots take the lead back twenty to seventeen. It's now twenty four to twenty. Twenty three to twenty four. And with just over two minutes left, it looks like the Patriots have the ball. Down one point. Let's see if they can get a comeback winning drive. Patriots are backed up pretty deep in their own territory. Let's see what Mac Jones can do. He takes the snap. He has a lot of time. He throws and it's complete. Almost down to the 30 yard line at the two minute warning now. All the Patriots need is a field goal. Since they are down one, this will win them the game. They don't want to score too fast because the Broncos do have all three timeouts. Mac Jones takes the snap again, and he throws, and it's picked off by the Broncos. It's not completely over yet, but that will just about seal the deal unless the Patriots can get a quick three and out. Just a terrible read by Mac Jones. And with a 41-yard rushing touchdown by Javante Williams... They are down eight points, so the Patriots still technically do have a chance here. All right, Mac Jones. See if he can do better this time than last time. He drops back. They are sending pressure. It's a screen. Ramondre Stevenson gets a lot of room here. He is all the way down to the other, to the Denver 32-yard line. What a play here. To set them up really nicely. And they're going no huddle. Just over a minute left. Mac Jones takes the snap again. He's backing up. He doesn't want to do that. He's going to get sacked. That's not a good thing to do. Now 55 seconds left. Just lost nearly half the yards they gained on that last play. 
Now 36 seconds left. Mac Jones takes the snap, and he's standing there. He throws it deep to a wide-open receiver for a touchdown. Devontae Parker. But it's not over yet. They still need to get the two-point conversion. Mac Jones hitting them with the Tebow. Let's see if they can get the two-point conversion here. Mac Jones takes the snap, and he throws it and completes it. It is the tie game, 31 all. Now with 30 seconds and three timeouts, the Broncos do have a chance to win the game with a field goal here. Russell Wilson, it looks like they might just be trying to run the ball out and get the overtime. And that is what they're doing, but there is a big open, open gap. And they might actually try to get a field goal now that they got a lot of yards on that run. Uh, first and ten, they are going to try to do something here. Russell Wilson scrambles, throws, and checks down successfully. They are down to the 50-yard line. Now 16 seconds left. They have one timeout left. They need to get about 20, 30 yards, and they get a complete pass. That is very close to field goal range there. They might have to try that with eight seconds left. They need to take a timeout. Yes, they are taking their timeout at two seconds. The Broncos will try a game-winning field goal here. Here they go. But the Patriots will ice them. Here we go. For the win. The kick is up. And it's no good. We're going to overtime. Did not have the leg. All right, folks. This overtime took a really, really long time. I have this sped up four times here. Patriots went down and scored after taking nearly all the time off of the overtime for the Broncos, but then the Broncos went ahead and took their own four-minute drive, slowly but surely getting down the field, and eventually they scored a touchdown to make it 38-all. Then the Patriots got the ball back, and they slowly drove down the field again, eventually kicking a field goal to win the game 41-38. to The 31 and 32 seeded teams have made it to the final four teams in our final matchup of the round of eight the giants and the browns the browns start off with a ball but do nothing and it is almost a it is a scoreless first quarter the game is now tied 7 7 10 to 7 10 to 10 going into halftime but the Bron the browns make it 17 10 and it is now 17 all looks like we're gonna have a tie game we might be going to overtime here just kidding. The Giants are in field goal range. Let's go ahead and see if they can close out this game. They have drained out basically all of the Browns' timeouts, and all they must do is basically run the ball a few times and kick a field goal. Here they go. Daniel Jones handing off the ball to Saquon, who gets tackled instantly. Another handoff to Saquon. This time he gets a little more yardage here. And they kick the field goal. It's up and it's good. The Giants have won this game and will move on to the final four teams. All right, and here's a look at our final four teams. We have the Bills and the Saints and the Giants and the Patriots. We're going to go ahead and get started with the Bills and the Saints here now in this semifinal matchup number one. Winner of this will go on to the championship. The Bills get on the board first with a field goal. So it's 3 nothing. Now it's 6 to nothing. Saints finally get on the board with a touchdown. It's 7-6. To now it's 13-7 right at halftime. Bills now make it 19. Now it's 19-14. All right. Slow this down. A little bit over three and a half. A little bit under three and a half minutes. Saints are down by five, but they do have the ball right now. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. And they get a 28-yard reception. Another big reception. It looks like they're going to go ahead and score on this drive. And they get down to the six-yard line, and then they score a touchdown. So with the with an extra point, the Saints will take a two-point lead, but a two-point conversion will give them a field goal lead. Let's see if they do a two-point conversion here. Derek Carr takes the snap, and he's scrambling, and he gonna, is going to throw an incomplete pass. So the Saints will maintain a one-point lead with two minutes, 50 seconds left. Let's go ahead and see what the Bills do on their drive. Looks like they're moving the ball pretty good. They might end up scoring too fast. 
And now that it's after the two-minute warning, all the the Saints, all the Bills need to do is get a first down. But they might end up scoring a touchdown before that, since they're so close. They're down to the one-yard line. Let's see, can they get in? We'll hop into this play. The clock is ticking. The Saints haven't used a timeout yet, which is kind of odd. But it's second and goal on the two-yard line. Anyway, Josh Allen takes the snap. He's scrambling, and he's going to scramble right into the end zone. With just under 30 seconds left, the Bills take a five-point lead without the extra point. They might try to go for two here, and they are going to go for two here to make it a seven-point game. Let's see if they can get it. And they do, a wide open receiver. So now it is 27 to 20. Saints have 30 seconds and three timeouts to get a touchdown to tie the game. All right, here we go. First down and 10 from the 27 yard line. 25 seconds. A quick pass that was almost intercepted, but there is a flag. And a defensive pass interference will give the Saints an extra 13 yards, now putting them at the 41-yard line. 22 seconds left on the clock. Still three timeouts for the Saints. Derek Carr takes a snap and he checks down to the tight end. Gets down to the 48-yard line. They can't do check downs if they want to win. Derek Carr stands. It looks like he's going to go deep, and he does. Going deep for a Hail Mary, and it is incomplete. Now nine seconds left on the clock. With two more timeouts, you don't have to start throwing the Hail Mary yet. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Here we go, third and two. Derek Carr throws. Another Hail Mary pass, another incompletion. This will likely be the last play of the game. All right, fourth and two from the 48-yard line. Five seconds left for the game. Derek Carr drops back. He's going to throw another Hail Mary pass. It's up. It is intercepted. Out of the way and intercepted. That is going to be the game. See if they can make it a pick six. No, they can't. Well, the Bills in another stunning upset here, technically. We'll be moving on to the championship match. The Saints will go to the third place match to see if they can get a bronze medal. And for our second semifinal match, we're going to have the Patriots and the Giants. Giants and Patriots to see who will go to the championship. Giants get on the board quick, 7-0. And now it's 10 nothing, but the Patriots get on the board 10 to 7. Now 10 to 10. At halftime, it is tied still. 13 to 10, Giants, and the Patriots tie it right back up. 20. Now nah, it's tied right back up. Anything the Giants do, the Patriots do right back. With just over two minutes left, it looks like the Giants have the ball. Let's go ahead and see what they are able to do here. And the answer to that was nothing. So I figured I'd speed this up so you don't have to have the boredom that I had from editing this video. Basically, what happened is the Giants punted the ball here, and then the Patriots went three and out and punted the ball, and the Giants did not score before overtime either. So we went into overtime. And, um, yeah. Here's some more footage of it. I'll just let y'all watch through this at four times speed once again. The Giants just took their sweet old time just to do nothing. Then we got into overtime, and the Patriots went three. Well, not three and out, but they punted the ball away to the Giants, who eventually got on the field goal range and won the game with a field goal. 23-20. to 20. And they're going to go for the field goal. Kick his up. And it's good. The Giants win. And move on to the championship to face the Bills. And before we get into our championship game of the Bills and the Giants, we're going to have our third place matchup of the Saints and the Patriots. Since the Saints are the higher seed, they will host the Patriots. Patriots get to the board first, 7 nothing, but the Saints respond 7-7. Seven seven. Now it's 14-7. Tied back up at 14, now 21-14. Patriots 24-14. Patriots might run away with this one, and it's 31-14, and it looks like they will be doing that. Saints trying to make a comeback, but it's just not enough. 34-28, final score. The Patriots get the gold, the, the bronze medal, and the Saints get nothing.
for getting in fourth place. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for, the Bills and the Giants in the championship game. And of course, in any other championship challenge we have, we're going to be having a Super Bowl matchup of the Bills and the Giants. Winner gets a gold medal, loser gets a silver medal. And the Giants get on the board first, 7 nothing, but the Bills tie it right back up, 7-7. Seven to seven. Approaching halftime, Giants get a 14 to 7, and now it's tied at 14. Bills go up by 3, 17 14, and now 20 to 14. But the Giants make it 21 20 with just over 3 minutes left. We're going to slow this game down just a little bit, see what the Bills can do. It looks like the Bills drive stalled out there, but they were able to get. They were not able to get a field goal because the 59-yard field goal by Tyler Bass was missed. So now the Giants can ice this game up, essentially, here. With a few rushes and maybe some points. And just like that, a 41-yard pass for a touchdown makes this an 8-point game with the extra point. So let's go ahead and hop in and see if the Bills can lead a game-tying drive. Here we go, Josh Allen on the Bills. 75 yards to get a touchdown. And an incomplete screen pass, but there is a flag, and it was holding on the offense. First and 20 now. Josh Allen starts to scramble and will get tackled at the 19-yard line. That's going to be the two-minute warning. And now it's second and 16 after the two-minute warning. Josh Allen throws the screen and is going to get some yardage off of this. All the way down to the 31-yard line, third and four. The clock is ticking. And it's third and four. A minute 41 left. Josh Allen throws a check down and gets the first down. They're going to have to start going hurry up here. And they indeed do. A minute and 20 left. Josh Allen takes a snap. And he throws which is complete and out of bounds to Gabe Davis. Second and five from the 44. Josh Allen takes a snap, and he's throwing it rather deep, and it is incomplete. Third and five now. Third and five, Josh Allen takes a snap. He throws to midfield, and it's complete to Gabe Davis again for another 20 yards. A minute left on the clock, 37-yard line. And now they're going hurry up, 47 seconds left. Josh Allen does a quick throw, and it is almost complete. That jump ball would have been huge there, but it's second and ten now, and the clock stops. Josh Allen, second and ten, takes the snap. He's standing. He throws to midfield, and it's complete again to none other than Gabe Davis. Down to the 16-yard line. I would use a timeout here, and they do. Josh Allen takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Throws it to the end zone, and it's complete to Dawson Knox. It's not over yet. They need the two-point conversion here. And here's the two-point conversion attempt to tie the game up. Josh Allen takes a snap. He throws. It's complete. We have a tie game here. 28 all. 27 seconds left. The Giants still have a very good shot, though. They have three timeouts, and all they need is a field goal here. And it looks like they're not even going to try. They're just going to be taking this game to overtime. So we are going to go ahead and hop into overtime now. And now we're in overtime. The Bills are getting the ball first. And they are already at fourth and one. So they're going to have to punt. Now all the Giants have to do is get some points. Third and five, and they don't get the first down. They're going to have to punt as well. Back over to the Bills now. Next score wins. And the Bills are losing yards here. Third and 20. And an incomplete pass, which means another punt. Now the Giants are starting to move the ball. Let's hop in and see if they can get a field goal because they are close to field goal range. Giants right on the cusp of 
field goal range, they're going to hand off Saquon, who gains maybe one yard. Another handoff to Saquon here, and he's going to get a good chunk of yardage there. It is third and two. Another handoff to Saquon. He's going to get the first down, and it is now all about just kicking a field goal to win the game and the competition. And they are not going for their field goal yet. But instead of handing the ball off to Saquon again, and he's going to get tackled without without any gain. And it looks like another run from Saquon is due up with under 40 seconds remaining. And he gets no airs. One yard. It's third and nine. They would have to think they're going to try to kick their field goal soon to win the game. And here we go for the championship win. The gold medal. The Giants take the kick. It's up. It's good. Game over. Giants have won this competition. And will receive another gold medal. Bills will get a silver medal. And as we had from the last match, the Patriots will have the bronze medal. Bills fought hard, but came up short in the end. And here is a final look at our bracket. Giants win. Bills get second place, Patriots third, and Saints fourth. Let's go ahead and get to the standings for the Madden Olympics and update them accordingly. All right, and here is a look at our updated standings. First place did not change. The Rams are still there, but we do have a new second place team as the Giants took it over from the Bengals. Bengals are in third, Eagles fourth, and Saints in fifth. Then we have the Bucks, Titans, Ravens, Cardinals, and Falcons. Then the Browns, 49ers, Cowboys, Seahawks, and Dolphins. Then the Commanders, Vikings, Panthers, Chiefs, and Lions. Jaguars, Jets, Broncos, and the Bills are now out of the last place spot with one silver medal. They are now right behind the Broncos. And we have the Steelers, Bears, Colts, and Patriots. And rounding out our bottom four, we have the Packers, Chargers, Raiders, and Texans. Anyway, since that was a longer challenge, we're only going to do one challenge for this episode of the Madden Olympics. So, if you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below also if you have any challenges you think we should add to our list of challenges for the Madden Olympics. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all have a great day. It's been Papa John. Peace.